Hey everyone, today we're going to be doing a video doing a direct comparison between a Mosin Nagant M9130 and a Mosin M44. Now right off the bat, I'm going to say as an American, I reserve the right to mispronounce foreign names and uh, nomenclature. So if it's going to bother you the way I pronounce Mosin Nagant, um, you might as well just do us both a favor and click away now. Um, but if you're willing to get past that, then I, I hope you stick around because it should be an interesting discussion. And I should um, say that the way I'm going to be approaching this is for someone who is looking to get into a Mosin Agant rifle. Um, maybe they're trying to decide, well, do I want a 9130? Do I want an M44? Um, you know, which way should I go? Hopefully through this video, I'll help um, you come up with a decision as to which rifle you should add at least first to your collection. Now for a little bit of information on these two specific rifles that I'm going to be showing you today, this 9130, um, if you've seen the other videos, you know that this is actually the very first firearm I ever purchased back when I turned 18. Uh, this one is a 1942 production out of the Izhefs factory, one of those words I'm going to be mispronouncing. Um, and then this M44 here is actually a 1954 production, um, again also out of the Izhefs factory. Now. Because these are both from the same factory, it'll hopefully give us as apples to apples of a comparison as possible. Um, although one of the big differences, at least in build quality that you'll see between these two when I show you some stuff close up, is obviously 1942, during the heat of the war when the Soviets needed to crank rifles out as fast as possible, versus uh, 1954, you know, post-World War II, um, a little bit more attention to detail, a little bit better fit and finish, but again, that's stuff you'll see. Um, but besides that, again, these are going to be as apples to apples as I can possibly make it. Now, these rifles are going to have an immense amount in common because they are really basically the same rifle, just ones with a shorter barrel and an attached bayonet, but we'll get into that. Um, shoots the same cartridge, has the same round magazine, um, same action, same sight setups, at least pretty dang close to it. Um, just little differences here or there. Um, predominantly being the length. So when you look at something like an M9130, I guess to explain why they might have gone to a shorter version of this rifle, um, this shows the um, signs of being a, you know, late 19th century, early 20th century service rifle. Very, very long with a big service rifle cartridge that is very capable, as a cartridge at least, out to 800 meters and beyond. With the rifle, you might be stretching it, but at least the cartridge itself can definitely make it happen at 800 yards and beyond in the 762x54R cartridge. The M44 here um, is obviously a shorter version of that. You know, if you look at the situations Russia was finding themselves in during World War II, you can really understand why they wanted a rifle like this one. Um, specifically, if you look at the Battle of Stalingrad, if you've seen the movie Enemy at the Gates, you know, you're as familiar as most Americans are with the Battle of Stalingrad, historical inaccuracies aside. Um, but that war took, or that battle, I should say, took place between like late 1942 and early 1943. And you're going from, you know, the anticipated usage of a rifle like this, you know, big wide open fields of Eastern Europe, you know, Central Asia, that kind of thing, um, where you know you're firing in ranks where having a long barrel is nice because if you're the second guy in the rank the guy in front of you will really appreciate that barrel being in front of them before you pull the trigger so you know makes sense why they would design a rifle like this one and if you look at rifles even from the united states you see a lot of those really long rifles with the big battle rifle cartridges um versus this one where hey you know what we're fighting city to city um or we're fighting building to building block to block Maybe I don't need a giant long barrel. Maybe I need something that's going to be a little bit easier to maneuver around um, and something a little bit shorter and with something like an attached, a permanently attached bayonet, um, one that you can fold out into place. Now the uh, 9130 does have the option to attach a bayonet, but it's something you're going to have to carry separately from the rifle, um, unlike this one. So before I get into the differences, obviously the similarities are going to be vast. Um, because they're really essentially the same rifle at, at their core. Um, similarities, same magazine. So they both have the five round capacity, both use the same style of bolt. I'm, I'd be surprised if they weren't more or less interchangeable. Um, same trigger setup, same stock setup, same sock shape for that matter, same feel. The rear sight is a little bit different, but we'll show you that here in a second. Um, and the sight arrangement, at least, of the sight picture 
is going to be nearly identical. Same look in front sight. Um, really, the differences are fewer, and that is their length and the way the rear sight looks. So what I'm going to do is bring the camera in a little bit closer uh, so we can look a little bit better at those differences. And then we'll hopefully try to weigh the pros and cons of those differences to help you maybe decide which rifle might be best for you to add to your collection again at least first. If you don't add both of them, at least which one to buy first. So what I'm gonna to try to do is get these in a way that you can actually see them. And we're gonna start by looking at the rear sight here. So if you look at the rear sight on the 9130 here, you can see that it's graduated all the way out to 2,000 yards. Um, as one might expect, that's a little bit optimistic <laughs> for a rifle with a sight picture like this one. Um, but again, it, it's very indicative of the thinking at the time when those rifles were produced. Now, if we look here at the M44, you can see that they've made this a much more realistically, although I think still a little bit optimistic, 1,000 yards. So um, a much more uh, attainable distance for your, for your average Soviet soldier. Um, but again, still pushing it in my opinion. I know there are people who can do it. Um, pushing it in my opinion for what this rifle is uh, able to do sight picture wise, at least for my eyes. You, you know, you may be different, but uh, that's how I am. If you look at here at the front of the 9130, you can tell we're pretty bare up here. We do have the cleaning rod, um, but you know, there's no permanently affixed bayonet. But again, you can get one that'll slide over the front of that and solve you know, that problem for you. But you're taking an already super long rifle and making it even longer by adding a bayonet. Here on the front of the M44, we still have the cleaning rod, which is really handy, um, but you, we have this bayonet here that is on the swivel system. Again, very similar to SKSs for anyone out there familiar with that. So I'm gonna have to swing it out here just so I don't nail my tripod. But now we have this attached bayonet. Um, so with this, let me get these side by side. So here I have these things pretty much side by side, and you can see that with the uh, bayonet, we are looking at a little bit longer than the 9130, but without the bayonet, significantly shorter. It's about eight inches, eight inches of difference in the barrel length between the 9130 up top here and the M44 down here. So now that we've covered the differences between these two rifles, um, let's talk about how those differences are actually gonna impact you as the shooter. Um, now, one of the, Obviously, with the difference in barrel length, one of the first things people are going to ask about is how does that change the ballistics of the 7.62x54R cartridge? Now, uh, barrel length absolutely plays a role in velocity. Um, I have now two videos covering how barrel length affects velocity in AR-15s. I have yeah, two videos with everything from a 20-inch barrel all the way down to a 7.5-inch barrel, and it, it demonstrates, at least practically speaking, about how much velocity you're giving up with the different barrel lengths. You would think that with eight inches shorter of a barrel, you're probably supposed to expect a pretty significant decrease in velocity. However, all the data that I can find shows that with like surplus ammo, the ammo that would have been issued with rifles like these, the actual difference is really only between 150 to 200 feet per second, which is absolutely a difference. However, not an enormous difference. Now, if you're shooting out to 2,000 yards, yeah, you're probably going to notice that. But again, when you're fighting in an urban setting or even a somewhat medium range, you know, outdoor setting, out to 300 yards, this is the M44 is still going to be capable of, of getting the job done. That that you know, 7.62x54R cartridge is still more than capable. You know 300 yards and in and even further i, I would you know it, it's it's like it's like an uh 308 yeah if you have a 26 inch barrel on a 308 sure if you're doing 1700 yard shots you want that added velocity but you know you look at m1a's or you know some of the ar10s that you see people using with like an 18 inch barrel 16 inch barrel you're still definitely able to get the job done within 300 yards and even pretty well past that I'm just using 300 yards as a benchmark for realistic engagement distances. So in my opinion, for your practical shooter, um, whether you want this as like an end of the world gun or a, a cache gun, or even just a fun plinking gun, 
giving up that velocity is not an issue. Now, where you're also going to notice a difference with that shorter barrel is because that gas has less chance to burn before the end of the barrel, you have a much more significant muzzle flash with the M44. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen pictures or video of people shooting these and having a giant fireball coming out the front. Now, it's going to be very dependent on the gun, um, but, you know, generally speaking, you're going to get a nice fireball out the front of this thing. Now, that's great if you're a plinker, if you're on the range, you want to have some fun. It looks cool. It, it's, more, uh, it's more of a crowd pleaser, I'll say, with that giant fireball. But from a self-defense situation, if you know you're you're trying to not give away your position, a giant fireball is going to tell the bad guy, "Hey, that's where they're shooting from. Put suppressive rounds in that direction," um, and you know, not going to be a fun day for you. Also, if you're in a low light setting or a nighttime setting or anything like that, you're going to lose your night adapted vision immediately with it and it's going to take a while to readjust to the dark um, so again that's not an issue if you're just shooting it as a range toy but if you're someone who's thinking of it in a prepper setting that is definitely something you want to consider now one other thing that you might think with the shorter barrel again eight inches shorter of a barrel is hey well at least it's going to be lighter it's going to be handier well i would definitely agree that it's handier it's definitely not lighter because of this permanently attached bayonet it's pretty much exactly the same weight as the 9130. Kind of counterintuitive, but it is there. Now, I will say, I do think it's handier still because less of that weight is way, way out front. You bring in that weight a little bit in closer to you, which makes it feel like less, at least when it's in your shoulder. But if you're carrying it on your shoulder or you have it slung on patrol or whatever else, you're still carrying around the same amount of weight as you would with the 9130. Now, in the specific differences between these two rifles, as I may have uh, hinted at earlier in the video, there is a significant difference in the fit and finish quality between these two rifles, given that this one, again, being a 1954 production, a not wartime production, and more time referring to World War II, they had much more, I guess, time to give attention to each individual rifle. Um, whereas, again, in 1942, they're trying to pump out rifles as quickly as they possibly can because um, Russia's solution to a lot of their wo wartime woes back then is just throw more people at the problem. So even in the battles that they won, they usually took a significantly higher casualty rate than the, their enemy that lost. Um, so they're just trying to pump out rifles. And I know many of you are familiar with stories of them not having enough rifles, so they issue two guys one rifle, and if the first guy dies and the second guy picks up the gun and they load it. I don't know the historicity of something like that, but, you know, it is a pretty common story out there, so I would not be surprised if that was the case for the Soviet military. Not exactly ideal. Now, the, the lack of fit and finish, the, the quality markings on the um, receiver, doesn't really give any sort of performance difference. It's purely aesthetic, at least in my case. Um, this 9130 shoots really well. It's got a nice, smooth bolt on it. Um, I granted I also got this at a time where um, these were plentiful and I got to hand pick it out of like seven or eight different M9130s still covered in Cosmoline so I was able to pick the one that felt the best so this is actually a really great shooting rifle unfortunately that's not going to be the case anymore um, you might have at most two if you're lucky maybe three 9130s at your local shop um, but even then, I still kind of lucked out with this M44 here. This one has a really nice smooth bolt um, and cycles very well and is a pretty good shooting rifle. Now, when it comes to accuracy, I, I hesitate to really comment on the accuracy difference between these two rifles. And that's because we're not getting them imported anymore, still coated in Cosmoline. So odds are, if you're buying one of these rifles, it's going to be on the secondhand market. You're getting it from someone who has already owned it possibly put a lot of rounds through it. Now, the surplus ammo that was plentiful when these rifles were plentiful was all corrosive ammo. So the quality of the barrel and the accuracy of the barrel is very dependent on how good of a steward the person who owned it before you was. So you might get an M44 that shoots great. You might get an M44 that shoots like crap. You might get a 9130 that shoots great. You might get a 9130 that shoots like crap. It's really hard to just say across the board, 9130s are more accurate or M44s are more accurate simply because a lot of it's going to be very dependent on the specific condition of the rifle that you come across. 
if you have a chance and you get to look at the rifling, make sure everything's nice and clean. Like the rifling on this M44 looks excellent. Um, obviously go with the one that's going to look the best and because it, it's probably going to shoot the best. But again, I, I, I don't necessarily want to say one's definitely going to be more accurate. Yes, you have a slightly longer sight radius with the 9130 than you do the M44, but sight radius doesn't really matter when you have a totally rusted out barrel. So um, again, just look at the specific examples you're able to get your hands on and odds are, given the sight setup that these have, you're probably going to be about as accurate with one as you might be with the other. Because for me, the sight setup is pretty crude and I have a hard time shooting very accurately with them. But again, that's just me. One thing I will say about accuracy that you can pretty definitively say different between these two rifles is the 9130, especially if you don't have a bayonet installed, no matter what you do, it's going to shoot pretty much to the same spot every time. Whereas with the M44, if you watch the dedicated review I did with this rifle, um, if you have the bayonet folded, this thing will shoot, I think we did it at 25 or 50 yards, a few inches left of your point of impact when you have the bayonet extended. And typically, they zeroed these with the bayonets extended. So while I might be shooting point of aim, point of impact with the bayonet out, um, now my point of impact is going to shift considerably to the left with the bayonet folded to the point where at 100 yards you might actually be off target depending on how big your target is so that is something to keep in mind you, you have to be very wary of where your rifle is zeroed with the m44 um, and whether you have the bayonet folded or not because that will play a role in your uh your uh, your accuracy i guess um of, of you know point of aim versus point of impact I should also point out that the M44 is not the only shortened version of the 9130. There are other versions out there, like the uh, M38s, I think were the Chinese Mosins that they cut down. Um, you can get like the Finnish M39s, um, which I believe are also shorter than the 9130. Um, so the M44 is not the only game in town when it comes to uh, shortened versions of the 9130, but it is probably the most prevalent. Now, even with the prevalence of the M44, they are obviously still not made in the same numbers as these 9130s. So because of that, if you did want an M44, you're going to be paying possibly double the price that you would for a 9130, just because there were millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of these, um, and a, a lot of them made them to the, into the surplus market here in the U.S. So these things, granted, when I bought it, it was under 100 bucks. You can still, I think, find them now for under 200 bucks if, you, if you're frugal enough and you're, you're patient enough. Um, but I guess it wouldn't be uncommon. If you go to Cabela's, they want like 350 bucks for these things, but that's because Cabela's is, I won't say what I think of Cabela's. I'm not a big fan of Cabela's, uh, at least not their gun sales. They are ridiculous. Um, M44s, I think the price tag on this thing when I picked it up was four or 450. And that's again, just because these are a little bit more rare than the 9130. So you are gonna be paying a little bit more. So with all that, if, I, if you were me, or if I were you, which one would I pick to add to my collection? Again, at least first. Because ideally, you would have both of them. Um, but which one would I get first? If you're just looking for something fun on the range, um, really, if you're for whatever your usages are, I would probably say the M44. I don't think you need a giant long barrel um, for realistic engagement distances that you might find yourself in. Even at extended ranges at the five, 600 yards, 762 by 54 is still gonna be very capable even out of an eight inch or so shorter barrel. Um, that's my opinion. And I, I think that that is a, a very fair say. I don't think that'll be very controversial. Now, I know that there are people who shoot a thousand yards with their 9130s they might have gotten really lucky and gotten a really well put together one um, that has really great rifling. Unfortunately, that's probably not going to be the case for you. So for practical accuracy, for fun, for handiness, for ease of use, I would say the M44. If, if I was looking for a survival gun, a cache gun, anything like that, this is going to be a lot easier to use, a lot more handy, and a lot easier to put into a cache tub than a 9130. Just you have such a long package here. And again, for only 150 to 200 feet per second difference, you're not really getting a whole lot for that 
significantly longer barrel, in my opinion. Also, one thing to take into consideration is everyone has a 9130, whereas the M44s are a little bit more unique. So if you're looking for that collector value, um, it might be a little bit cooler, quote unquote, to have an M44 versus a 9130. Now, again, that's a totally subjective thing, but these are a lot less common, so they're a little bit more of a, oh, hey, that's pretty neat when you pull it out of your range bag versus a 9130. Again, totally subjective, but at least that's my take on it. But again, with the differences, I think there's a reason that the later version between these two rifles is the shorter, handier version. Um, it's not like they decided, hey, this 9130 isn't long enough. Let's add a bunch of length and weight out to the front end. Um, I think I think they learned their lesson in the urban fighting, um, which really the ultimate lesson learned is we don't need a battle rifle cartridge at all. We need to switch to an intermediate rifle cartridge um, and Hence why they went to the uh, um, SKS in 1946, 1945, 1946, which went down to the 7.62 by 39, and then obviously into the AK-47 very shortly after that. So um, the lessons learned was, you know, maybe less is more for realistic engagement distances for war fighting. Um, but again, you can decide that for yourself. Now, you will have to pay a little bit more money for these M44s, so if budget is the most important thing for you, there's nothing wrong with a 9130. In fact, I will say that between these two rifles, I will probably keep the 9130. This afternoon, I'm probably actually taking this M44 in for consignment, um, hence why I needed to get this video done. Um, and that's mostly because of the um, sentimental value of this being the first rifle I ever purchased versus this one, which I picked up less than a year ago. Um, but coming into a cold, if I'd had to have picked between the 9130 and the M44, I would have picked the M44. In fact, I would have pretty much picked any Mosin variant, M38, M39, over the uh, 9130. But that's just my own personal take on it. I should also add that while this M44 has a sling, um, my 9130 came with a sling. I don't have it attached, so don't think of that as a deal breaker. If you want a sling, you still have the same same sling loops uh, on this, so you can still attach a sling. Um, it's just this one came with a sling, and I've I've kept it on there because of that. So in summary, I don't think you can really go wrong with either one. Both of them are, are just as uh, I think viable of options as the other. I just think that the lessons learned that led to this design are the exact same reasons why I would personally rather use one of these versus the 9130. Again though, if the uh, night blind issue or the target indicator like a giant fireball is a big issue to you, maybe you would want a 9130. Or maybe you might want something that's not a battle rifle cartridge at all. Maybe you want something that's a box fed semi-automatic rifle, but that's a discussion for another time. So if you have both of these rifles, what I want you to do is just say which one you would prefer down in the comment section below. If you have any of the other variants, again, M38s, M39s, etc., go ahead and let us know that as well. What would you rather have between the 9130 or your other variants? Um, personally, again, if it wasn't for the fact that this was my first rifle, um, I would probably ditch it for an M39, M44, M38, anything like that, but again, I'm, I'm, I'm never going to get rid of this rifle. I, I just have way too much memory attached to this thing and way too much uh, sentimental value here. If you want to see dedicated reviews of each one, I do have them. They are out there. I have one on this 9130 and this M44, as well as other mil military surplus rifles. So if military surplus rifles are your jam, definitely check out those videos. Um, and I'm hopefully going to be adding a few more rifles to that inventory here soon. Um, I have a couple friends with some very nice rifles in their collections that We'll hopefully be able to run in front of the camera for too long. So if that sounds interesting to you and you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would definitely recommend doing that. Um, definitely stay on top of things as they come out and uh, hopefully get to see some cool stuff here before too long. I am also uploading, uploading to Full 30, so if that appeals to you, definitely check out my Full 30. Um, and I do have a Patreon page. Uh, if you feel so inclined to financially support the channel, it really does make it an, an enormous difference in what I'm able to bring in front of the camera and how often I'm able to come out to the range and review stuff. Um, I, it's a pretty small team of us over there right now, um, but the supporters I do have are awesome and they really are helping make things happen. And because of that, I upload all my content there early. I do some exclusive content for them over there, um, as well as doing giveaways, live streams, etc. So if you feel so inclined, definitely check out my Patreon. It, it really does make a difference, but uh, I'll go ahead and jump off my soapbox for that now.
So anyway, with all that said, as always, I hope you're able to get something out of this video, and I really appreciate you watching.